You see her up there? That's my girlfriend. That's a son. Ever banged out a son before? Ever been a son before? A star? Ever been a Star Trek navigator? Navigate through the stars? Use the stars to navigate? Communicate with the stars? Stars will send you information. How to get through the stars? Communicate with all the stars, right? Star Trek navigators. Everybody know what a sextant is? Remember in the olden days, wooden ships? They used a sextant. Um, the old Hawaiians, tribal Hawaiians that built canoes, they were big travelers. They used the stars to navigate. That means they have knowledge of the stars, right? The movement of the stars. Uh, there's a, uh, a canoe that, as I remember it, that they built recently by a guy named Kane over in Hawaii. Um, and I read about this yesterday, and of course this is, isn't a coincidence, about uh, Arcturus. Hawaiians know all about Arcturus. Okay? Um, which is known as the Star of Gladness, happiness, love and joy. The Arcturians are here. Uh, the word that I got was that they, uh, they had a ship on the east coast and the west coast and they were rescuing children and putting them in healing, living biospheres. So this morning I thought, well, I, I don't think there's really anything that I was, that I was going to share because I've shared so much that's connected to so much other stuff that I thought, is there anything that comes to me that I'm prompted to share and that just nothing came? I realized, you know, what, what more is of any value that isn't already known that people have access to to uh, journey through the stars and be a star trekker? So then I thought of a few things like uh, something I mentioned yesterday about DNA, the female mitochondria, uh, knowing who to reproduce with, uh, and what have you. And then I thought about how I, for example, when you move through the cosmos at a very high rate of speed, the responsibility that you have um, as a being, for example, if you get a girl pregnant or what have you, and then you're the father and what have you, and when you sort of perceive that through the lens of population control, the institution of marriage, which essentially means that the male is holding the female captive, which is uh, not how the Indians and the tribes uh, perceive how it is that they live as a tribe. The tribe is a community, okay, of spiritual beings. So the child learns through the tribe. And the female elders are what's known as the ancient spiritual wisdom keepers, and they choose their male representatives, and that would be your male chiefs. So there's a big difference between how a tribe is going to breed children and who they learn from, because we live in nature and have a communication relationship with everything that is living in spirit in nature and with the great living spirit of Mother Earth. That's a completely different paradigm by which an Indian is going to grow up and live its life and who it's learning from, okay, than the cultural civilization that reptiles built in which you drop your children off to people that we don't even know and you have no idea the information they're putting into their head which becomes the future information they run off of in order to be what? Fill a billet, an occupational code kept on file with the Department of Labor. So if I'm the CEO of a corporation, I might go to the president of that corporation known as the USA Inc. and say, hey, guess what? Uh, over the course of the next 20 years, I need at least 100,000 scientists that are going to be working in the field of synthetic biology. 
I need 10,000 uh, males and females to be working machinery in factories that I have on Mars. And I'm going to need X amount of employees to fill this job, this job, this job, this job. So therefore, the educational system has to be based on our needs. So their public school systems are human resource training centers to become energy slaves for code, coded billets. Remember, allocation codes of energy, numerically driven, okay, tied to a time clock in a lower dimension because the time, the energy moves at a slower pace. That's capturing consciousness. Okay, so then I thought 360, 360 degrees. That's a circle. That's called a circle of light. The sacred hoop. The Indians have a sacred hoop, like a hula hoop. Spin in that light. I had an interesting conversation with a, uh, a bus driver this morning who asked me a lot of questions, and this happens all the time, because when you impart information, for example, that certain people, particularly on a bus, cannot connect to, they, can, they cannot relate to the information, think you're a kook, uh, you're crazy, you belong in a loony bin, and that is precisely the point. That's why they set up the school systems, put in the information in the head, okay, so that you run off of that information. So I said, listen, because she said, listen, you know, there's a lot of people that would look at you and think you're nuts and kooky. I said, I know that. I knew that as a child. Okay? And why do you think that is? So I said, think of it this way. Remember that, uh, that old philosopher, I think his name was Hobbes? You go into the Greek philosophers like Plato, Socrates, and all them guys, right? And they had a way of imparting knowledge, what they considered to be uh, wisdom. Remember, what is wisdom? What does it mean to be enlightened? Okay? And I said, well, try and think of it this way. When, you're, when your child is put into a human resources training center, by the time they get out of high school, most of all their time is spent doing what? Acquiring allocation units of numerically driven paper money, right? Okay, so now they spend most of their time making money, right? Well, so how much time is left over learning? Okay, they've been trained to intrinsically think about what money is. The power of money, which is equal to energy. They're not seeking knowledge. Knowledge is where power is. Learning is power. So this is where we get into what I mentioned before, the speed of the learning, just like the four-year-old girl I mentioned yesterday. This little girl had knowledge on a level that blew me away that she knew these things at that age. That's a measurement, isn't it? That's a measurement of what that girl has learned over the course of that soul's development. She learns fast, very fast. So this is why, for example, when you realize what these other beings, the information they're holding in their head, the first question I would ask is, well, the information that is in your mind that you're running on off of unconscious memory, who gave you that information that you're running on, which becomes your belief system? Uh, the church, okay, and, and the public school, mass media, the newspapers, the books, everything that they present to us, right? Remember when I talked about garbage in, garbage out, toxic in, toxic out. So it was very difficult, particularly for children, to not know that everything that's been presented to them was presented to them by demons, masqueraders. And that's what it means to be inverted. What they believe is true is false, and what is false is true. Now, when you present something like that to somebody, they're going to think you're nuts. 
because they're not about to let go of what they believe in because all that information was put into their disk. That's the unconscious memory. And since they don't have any other information in which they're operating off of, what happens? You end up in an argument, a conflict. And that's precisely the point. Is to produce more disharmony amongst everybody here to where they flood, if you will, the earth plane with beings who believe what is true, which is false. And then you have beings that know what's true, which is what love is, which is what light is, that is true. So I explained to this lady, think of yourself as a blank disc. And you realize that your heart is a powerful vortex, so you're spinning an enormous amount of light at a high rate of speed. So your soul is your compass. So your soul knows what's right and what's wrong. That's the inner us. That's the inner you. That's the inner me. The soul. The soul knows. So the soul and where we happen to be at any one given point in time is based on what we've learned up till that point in time. So when I mentioned to this lady, for example, I started presenting information that's very basic. 360 degrees, a circle of light. The vortex in the heart spins like a vortex. 360, three plus six is what? Nine. Nine. Base nine. That's trinary. That's a tesseract. That's a hypercube. That's hyperspace. That's a hyperdrive. Bye. Now you're off and running. So that's why when I think about words like how we love to use the English language to label and group everything. A flock of birds. A school of fish. A hive mind. A beehive. Well, I think of myself as a singularity unit, a single unit. I can be friends with a flock of sheep. I can be friends with a school of fish. We can be friends with everything. They're all our playmates. But I am an autonomous unit, which is a singular unit. A singularity drive, which is infinite light, which is infinite love, which is an enormous amount of fire. Just like that sun up there. Power through the stars with your sun. The first sun, the first star. Star trekking. <laughs> it's so simple, huh? That's why there's still that child in us that loves to play, loves to be in a state of love and joy that lasts forever. That's what Arcturus is, is the gladness star. Remember the song by Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker, and Jack Bruce? I'm so glad, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. These guys all knew. All their music. Look, look at the group Rush. They put the pentagram right on the drum. You get the guy who's a bass player saying, we're going and we're going back to reverse. Look at their lyrics. Go, re go look at the lyrics of a song that they wrote called Subdivisions. They explain the geometry of how electrons are flown and contained within circuit boards to hold people's state of consciousness captive to the allocation of electron units based on the numerical system in which they are allocated. So what I did is I gave this bus driver says, listen, if you want to get up to speed on a lot of this stuff, which simply means that that's just other data that people are putting out there to sort of put a puzzle together. How fast can you put a puzzle together? 
I said to her one time, I said, think about it. See that sun up there? She asked me about God. She says, there's gods and goddesses in there. I said, yeah, well, of course. Take a look at that sun up there. You wouldn't be able to grow any food down here without that sun up there. That's free energy. Even if you're four years of age and you look up at that sun, you got to know that's a lot of powerful energy is lighting up the day. The most basic elementary fundamental questions of the cosmos is all around us. And when nature becomes your teacher, the speed of our learning increases tenfold. So they had to do everything they could to disconnect you from the teacher in the classroom. And they did a really good job of that, didn't they? So, um, I noticed that on a video that was, uh, that was put up the other day by Indoctrination, they're now called Snedekers, uh, Snedeker heads, waking up, becoming more aware of the demons, the satanic demons, being held captive to demons. So he showed, and it's just like, how, how could this not be obvious? They showed this town hall meeting apparently the other day where you have a white star, okay, a pentagram, okay, in red. And then they had other, uh, I, I look like girls, young women, if you will, wearing masks, six feet apart from each other, okay? That's a satanic ritual. They're trying to hex, okay, President Trump. He walked right in there, sat down. That's a brave light warrior doing something like that, isn't it? Willing to take on all those questions being slammed, put down, you don't know this. What an insult. Just a complete insult to the intelligence of the American people. So what I heard about the other day is that, yeah, but you got all these young adults, if you want to call them adults, again, another word, right? They want to go to communism. Well, let's break it back down to the most simple thing. I remember as a child, I'll go look up communism. Remember, they invert everything. What does communism mean? It's another ism. Commune, a commune. What is a commune? It's a community. It's like you have a colony of ants. Just like you have a school of fish. A flock of birds. Then you have a singularity unit. We're back to the pigeons that need to be fed. Which means the pyramid. So when you look at communism, it says the guys at the top, the corporations, control the means of production. You're simply a slave. It's one of the reasons why, for example, uh, the first wife that I was married to, even though I knew at the time, and this is crazy, um, that this was never going to work out because I'm marrying a girl who's going in material form, which is matter density form, which means that she wants to hold on to the matter density that is in the lower dimension instead of uh, losing mass density to go faster, right, which gives you lift, transdimensional stuff, right? Remember the geometry of how that works? You want to go faster, then you got to let go of the things that hold us captive, like heavier density matter stuff. So this girl wanted, she perceives the universe through the lens of money and matter, heavy matter density through material form. So in other words, the more stuff that you think that you own, which is temporary in nature, as this, that is how you define what is successful, is lack of knowledge, which is lack of light. So it, that didn't last long. Um, for obvious matters, you're choosing your learning pathway. When we learn through higher, more powerful spiritual beings like the girl on the planet or the obvious female macabre up there in the sun, then we're advancing our coursework, aren't we? Instead of learning through demons. So they fill our heads with junk, garbage, 
to hold us in lower matter density dimensions. Because those are the dimensions that they love to be in through self-indulgence and a perversion of nature. So you see that perversion presented to us all over the place. Particularly when you get into uh, mapping the mind, if you will, all their MK Ultra stuff, all their nanotech, all that junk. Okay? So that's why, this, as I told this woman, this planet is being liberated by the light, which is what love is. Okay? And so that's probably the most important message that I tell everybody's relaxed. Everything's going to be fine. And I realize how hard that is to do. So um, I thought to myself, the younger people that have gone through all these, uh, these colleges and universities and schools that think that they know what is true, that they believe in, that they put in their unconscious memory, and then they run off that is nothing more than parasitic programming. And that's how they recycle energy from one generation to the next to be energy slaves held captive to somebody at the top. A ruler. A ruler. A scalar measurement of what's ruling us. An allocator. The crumbs, remember? You get what's left after we consume everything else. So these are controller types. And that's the dilemma is control. They can't let go. And you see that everywhere. Everywhere you see somebody putting something in a cage is a controller. That's what they do with our children. Anyway, that's my parting shot for the morning. Uh, for what it's worth, what I do know is that things are escalating or accelerating at an enormous rate of speed. And it is going in the right direction because one of the things that I measure is how many people are waking up and becoming aware of what they've been controlled by and no longer want to be controlled through fear of a predator, of a system that doesn't serve us, because we can measure the evidence of how badly it does not serve humanity by everything that we measure in nature. Because nature, which is her, is a provider of what it is that we use here to sustain ourselves, which is the purity of the water, the purity of the air, which is the purity of the fire, which is the purity of the soil. Purity of that sun, the fire in that sun. The one we have within us, our soul. How much fire do we have on our soul to burn a brighter bulb and Star Trek through all the stars in the cosmos and say hi and spread love and light wherever we go. And when we do that, we find out we are welcome to have a thriving relationship with star nation communities, not held captive by a pindar at the top of a pyramid to control everything below it. Have a great day. I love you all. We're headed in the right direction. I am happy as a jaybird. Ever been around a jaybird that squawks? <laughs> they are loud birds, but I love jayhawks. Have a great day.